Hi, um, my name is Angela Lopez. I am a fine artist in the San Francisco Bay Area, and I have the very great pleasure to speak to three wonderful artists who are also in the San Francisco Bay Area. And I'm going to have them introduce themselves by just telling their name, uh, the medium that they work at, and their favorite subject matter. And wh whoever wants to start first can start first. Pick one. Oh, okay. Hadi, you start first. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Hadi Agai. Uh, I mainly work right now with acrylic, but on the side between my acrylic, which is my main medium, when I take a break, I do pastel pencil work, just do a small stuff, portraits and a small sub objects and stuff. But mainly, I spend all my time with acrylic and large, you know, like four by four paintings. Uh, 
yeah, very much. Uh, that's it. <laughs> Was there any other question on that, or I, I oh, forgot? I'll, I'll ask you questions later. Okay. Christine. Okay. Um, I guess Carolyn, you can go next. Yeah. So I'm Carolyn Lee, um, and I do a lot of watercolor landscape paintings. And um, in my art, I usually try to invite individuals to find connection to beauty and nature, and that can often inspire inner healing and reflection. And um, another goal is to foster commitment to environmental stewardship. Okay. And then Viviana. Sure. So my, I'm also, uh, you know, Bay Area artist. I worked since a long time in this area. My favorite, well, first, my mediums recently, because I have switched quite through my career, but I came back to kind of the basics, graphite, charcoal, watercolors, I wanted to do a little bit more of, of the medium that was more e-friendly, just to you know follow up with my beliefs. And I, in terms of subject, um, I love things that make me dream, and that's kind of been my my latest approach. But also, I have other series about uh, environment, like Carolyn just mentioned, endangered animals, and um, just awareness in that area. So those have been kind of my my inspirations lately. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah, I, I, I had this talk because um, I, I, I always feel like it's it's nice for artists to talk to each other and just to learn from each other because you all of you have very different experiences. And I'm just realizing all three of you don't know each other and stuff. So this is the first time all three of you will be meeting each other. And I just want to vouch for all of your characters. You're all good people. So, <laughs> so, but I guess I think the first thing I can ask is, um, for all of you, how did you become interested in art and who are your artist heroes and heroines? So we, oh, and maybe, um, I, I don't know. Um, should I let, pick let, again? Uh, <laughs> let's do backwards this yeah. Time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Maybe you can start first. Yeah. So as I briefly mentioned, I've been in arts basically all my life. I was one of those kids that were that was always kind of drawing. I, I knew it was something around there. Um, as I you know became more aware that I could do that when I was a teenager, I remember painting all my my walls and doors. My mom would allow me to do such won a couple of awards, and I kept going with it. Like I I, you know, went to an art school, did a master's and continued. However, there was this period in my life that I dedicated myself mostly to video production, which is oh. another passion of, of me. And I um, stopped doing kind of the art that is more personal, I would say, it's still in communication, but different settings. And recently I came back a few years ago, although I've also been teaching it through all my life, even when I was doing video production, I was still teaching uh, some kind of art. So I've always been connected with this. In terms of artists, oh my God, there are so many that I like, honestly. And sometimes <laughs> there are I like more than, you know, because every artist can create so much and some things are like songs, successful, right? And you like them and some others might not uh, be so uh, uh, connected with you, even though it's the same person, but in general, when I was very young, Van Gogh, for some reason, I know it's a cliche, but yeah. he um, kind of many personal things make me connect to uh, to him. Second, when I was kind of um, learning it, I, um, I did, again, a lot of video and photography first. So Sophie Cole was another one that I loved because of her stories, the way she narrates and used photography for showing specific moments and have a mm -hmm. dialogue with society. Um, one from my own country, I'm, I'm from Mexico City, Remedios Varo. Well, yeah, it's a, she's also kind of international, but I always love her surreal landscapes and everything that she portrayed like a dream, which is kind of what I do, actually, yeah. um, in my own way, my own vision. Yeah. And again, so many, like recently I love uh, Jono Dry, an uh, African-American, sorry, he's, <laughs> he's from South Africa, artist. Oh, and okay. he's an excellent hyper realistic um sketcher drawer so i i really love his art so yeah those yeah. are just a few i could continue <laughs> but 
Yeah. But, you know, I wanted to let you know, Van Gogh, it's hard to avoid him. He's in mugs, calendars, posters and stuff. So it's hard not to be influenced by Van Gogh and stuff. Uh, yeah. And let me, well, I should tell you really quick why I connected so much. Like my, I remember my mom seeing um, in front of the TV, she was crying and I was a, a very young kid at that time. And I was like, why are you crying mom? And she was, I remember she was looking at a, a um, a, a, a picture of one of Van Gogh's flower vase, the oh, one that sold from, like, like art used to be sold for four million, five million max, and then this one sold for like thirty million, setting the art uh, mm -hmm. to another level. That was the piece in in the eighties that happened back then, and my mom was crying because she was. I, I asked her, "Why are you crying?" It's like because it, she told me this guy like died poor, right? And look yeah. how you know his art is like how much he did, like he was amazing, just nobody saw it. She was crying. And then I remember, <laughs> like, what's this guy? And he was making my mom cry. And yeah. I started liking his work. I started kind of researching about it in my own eight-year-old or somewhere around there time. So yeah, that was my first connection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but well, hopefully that doesn't meet our fates too, that you know our, our paintings start selling millions of dollars after we die. So, <laughs> so. Okay. We can have well, a conversation about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think is Carolyn, are you next or sure I can go next. Um so how I became interested in art. Um I as well was really interested in it as a child and I would just love drawing and painting a lot. And um I also spent a lot of time outdoors and it became a place of healing and sanctuary for me and I think when I go outdoors, that really inspires a lot of my art and that's how I find inspiration. And it's yeah, often the subject that I paint. And um, yeah, and so I soon found a love for watercolor and just really loved sort of the lightness of it and how you can portray light with it. And a lot of times my art is about light and so it kind of worked out well. And, um, and then I studied studio art and illustration in college and now I just keep a studio practice and try to exhibit as much as I can. Yeah. Um, and in terms of artist heroes, I actually, um, um, Van Gogh has for a long time been an inspiration. I think even though he's an oil painter and I'm a watercolor painter, um, I think his brush strokes and the way he translates light into really colorful brush strokes and then translates shadows and sort of darker like black and grays into blue and purple. Yeah, um, that really inspires me sort of his technique there and just how expressive he is with his art. Um, but I think recently I've really been inspired by Tony Foster and he actually has a, oh. um, there's a museum called the Foster Museum in Palo Alto. Some of you might know about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool to, be, to have a, a gallery named after you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think he actually, he had a painting in the Smithsonian and then um, an art professor from Stanford, I think, saw his art and really thought that it aligned with some of her goals, like with the environment and inspiring connection to beauty in the natural world. And so she had a big fund and she wanted to fund um, a little museum for him. So it's actually a really great one if you want to check it out in Palo Alto. Oh, okay. um, but he does really, really large watercolors of nature. Oh. And they're really beautiful, like just so much beauty and... Um, yeah, I think his art, he says that they're often about journeys. And so he'll go on journeys and especially into more vulnerable places of the world, environmentally and ecologically, um, like Alaska or like painting glaciers, you know, in the North Pole. Um, and yeah, so he just has a lot of really, I think in terms of like style and sort of like the purpose of his art, I can align a lot with that and have found a lot of inspiration through him. Yeah. So is your, in your art, the traveling to nature and painting is is, is part of your art. It's not just the, the art itself, but the physical traveling. Yeah, I think going, traveling, and ex actually experiencing nature is very different from looking at, you know, images on the computer. You can experience yeah. it. And then I try to, I think a lot of times my paintings emerge from experiences in nature, or like significant experiences in nature. And then um, like, you know, seeing a vast view from mountaintops or seeing how fog kind of changes the mood of a scenery. Oh, okay. um, and then I'll try to convey that experience through my art and, and also try to convey, 
you know, anything else that I might be trying to communicate, like something in my inner life that other people can relate to, uh -huh. um, or um, something sort of like, like I've loved painting Glacier National Park, and that place has a lot of glaciers that are steadily shrinking over the de decades. Oh, okay. And um, and so it's it's a really like top choice for researching climate change and just seeing it in action. And so painting that was really meaningful for me. Because, you know, in, in a few decades, the glaciers, several of them could disappear or like shrink a lot. And, and so the paintings could kind of be like a record, you know, or like an elegy to those glaciers. Okay, cool, cool. How about you, Hadi? <laughs> uh, just like everybody else, I, uh, I started playing with pen and pen, uh, paper very, very early age as oh. my siblings you know, wrestle on the floor together or play around. I'll pick up a pen and pencil and just draw what they're doing. And that's how I started. Yeah. Uh, the actions and everything. Uh, no, no after school, no art school, no nothing. Uh, but I picked up by practicing. Uh, and when I got to the high school age, I discovered pastel. <laughs> so oh. I, I started using uh, drawing pastel paint, uh, drawings. And uh, that's when I finished high school, that's when I moved to the US. And that's when it all stopped. <laughs> so because of the political situations and uh, mm -hmm. cut off of the money and everything so survival become became the my first priority and no time for doing art it's just uh, you have to stay in a school to be legal with mm -hmm. certain number of credits and to work two three jobs to survive so mm -hmm. art went away for a long time and 35 years 35 years later which was in middle of 2014, I came back to art. Actually, somebody twist my arm, dragged me to their studio because they see my the work I've done when I was young. <laughs> and uh, So for um, Carolyn yeah. and Viviana, they voluntarily came back to art, but for you, somebody forced you. Yeah, because I didn't know I have it in me anymore. Uh, okay. And and for the first time, it wasn't no pen, paper or pencil. They gave me a brush and acrylic and a canvas, and I never used that before. Yeah. They just told me, just do whatever you want to do. Just do it. Start. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I came up and I came up with the imaginary scenery. Uh -huh. And I titled it number one. Yeah. Because it was it was my first painting. And they were surprised. And when I got to my second and third one, the artist that took me to her studio, she said, I should be taking classes from you. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a very compliment, compliment, great compliment that encouraged me, that encouraged me to continue. Yeah. yeah well, every uh, beginning artist wants to hear their teacher say that. So. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> I know. But the... Uh, yeah, that's how that's how I came back. Um, after uh, doing many similar things that others do, you know, objects and scenery and stuff, they became my kind of practice to get into the learning of the using the brush and canvas. Yeah, and soon my whole feeling matured, and I said. Now that I know how to paint, this is not what I want to paint. I want to paint something meaningful. Yeah. And I turned into uh, drawing social political subjects. Yeah, yeah. And I so far I've been doing that. Uh, I don't recommend it for anybody. Yeah. Everybody loves it. Everybody tap you on the back. Thank you for doing that. But nobody wanna buy and put it hanging <laughs> in the <laughs> in their house. Yeah. But that hasn't stopped me because this is what I want to do. That's feel what I yeah. what I have to do as an artist. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you know, that sort of leads to my next question and stuff. So, I mean, 
you, your your um, art is influenced by your Iranian background, and you do socially social um, uh, social justice themes. You know, mm -hmm. Carolyn mentioned how her art um, um, environmental uh, inspires connection yeah. to the natural world, and Viviana talks about how she uses surreal imagery in in her art and stuff. Now, for all the three of you, what do you want your art to communicate? You know, you met you 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 uh, touched upon it, but if you want to talk a little bit more, and um, who starts this time? I think Hadi, Viviana, and I guess Carol, or actually, who, who, I guess Carol, are you the next person to start first, or I can go. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, what I want my art to communicate, I think, um, different things at different times. Um, there was a show that I did one time in uh, it was exhibited in a church and um it was still mostly landscape paintings but i heard from one of the people who looked at the art and he is a war veteran and he felt that some of the paintings brought back memories from his childhood and a lot of happy memories and um he said that in seeing some of the paintings um and he was just explaining with different stories how my art um, brought spiritual healing for him and also healing mm -hmm. um, in a small way for his PTSD from the war. And I think that was really meaningful for me, like having my landscapes um, inspire inner healing for someone. And I hope it can keep, keep on doing that. And I think um, also just, as I mentioned earlier, conveying um, really enchanting experiences in nature and inspiring other people to get out and enjoy nature because I think it can be really healing and um yeah um there are there are some proposed expansions of some U.S. national parks and national monuments um mm -hmm. and the expansions would be really important because it would protect some homeland of indigenous people yeah. um and their cultural sites and sacred sites for them. And I think one of my goals is to paint those areas. Um, they include Joshua Tree National Park and the Berryessa Snow Mountain area, um, and then the San Gabriel Mountains. And uh, I think it's near LA, but Southern California. Um, and, you know, hopefully writing artist statements to go with those paintings, sort of explaining. Um, or just like supporting the expansion of those places because it would protect the indigenous people's homeland, but also, um, and also protect some endangered species and flora and fauna and, and protect habitats that are really important in California. Um, yeah. So those are a few of the things I want my art to communicate. Oh, cool. cool. How about you, Viviana? Well, you know, it's, always interesting to think what others think about your art while you're doing it. But I definitely think that my art is about uh, inspiration, dream. I believe in what I call visual poetry. As much as you know, a poem can give you, I think we can transmit something similar visually. Deeper sensations that are not there at first glance. Um, Sometimes my art has been mentioned to be whimsical, which I think maybe is true, has something yeah. about it. We see, you know, it's playful, it is unpredictable sometimes, unusual. And that's what I like. I like these spaces where we can create that do not maybe exist in the everyday, but we just, when we put it together, it kind of has some reality to it, you know, like yeah. just... Yeah. So that's one part of what I do. And of course I have my other series that I do, especially the one with endangered species. I've yeah. been trying to raise awareness with that one. That's what I've been, you know, mostly, yeah. um, that's the aim of it. Just to think about the animals environment in general and you know, what we have done, what we can stop doing and what can still we do to yeah. make it more even. Oh, cool. You know, Carolyn touched upon this, but I'm wondering for all three of you, when somebody looks at your art and sees something different than what you um, originally intended, does that change how, you, you know, you know, like when you're coming forward, 
now because that person said something i'm i'm I, i'm consciously thinking of something that i didn't think of before in terms of when i create my art is that something for the three of you happens and stuff yes yes oh, okay i uh, you guys know george rivera mm -hmm. any of you no no george rivera is uh, he's a former uh, director at uh, the Triton Museum. He was he he directed Triton Museum for twenty four years, oh. and also been teaching art for over forty years. And currently in Mission College, Olan, Olan uh, College, uh -huh. UC Berkeley Extension and stuff. He's he's been all always been around, and he he judges art all the time. So <laughs> sometimes he invites me for inspiration to his students, he invites me to his class, he asks me to bring one of my painting and then he talks about it. Yeah. So when I take it there and he sees it for the first time, nine out of 10, ten things that he says about my painting, what it means, it's wrong. It's what he <laughs> wants. <laughs> <laughs> because that's, that's, that's the thing about art. Yeah, art is what it means to the viewer when they yeah. see. It, yeah, right. It doesn't have to be because most of the time, a lot of art we create is personal. It's what we like. It's the way we think, and only we, only us, we know what it means, right? Yeah. But others, they have a different take from it. Yeah. 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 Okay. But but that happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, next Monday, uh, tomorrow, he invited me to go to his class and take one of my paintings. Oh, so, that's so cool. That's cool. <laughs> I'm going there, uh, show it to his students. And he, it's really, really inspirational for the students. Uh, he wants to know if they continue, you know, how how can they, how far they can go and if it changes their mind of what they plan to do with their art based on what they see and yeah. all those things. So it's a good thing. Yeah. I always think that when, if somebody sees something in my art that makes me look more smarter or more, <laughs> you know, more impressive, I'll always agree with them. You know? <laughs> well, the thing about art that as, as Hadi mentioned, it's about the viewer because it's how you project, like everybody has, a different story, right? A oh, yeah. Yeah. It could, it's how it projects to you. Like you you create a reflection and then whatever, you know, they call it. <laughs> you can never uh, guide as much. Some of it, it's more obvious than others, but at the end is the experience that you are, all, that you're trying to convey and how, you know, the person absorbs it is is very interesting how it, it works but and also yeah. like my painting has uh, so many elements in there all the time right yeah and people get confused they ask me they want to know technical stuff they, where is the focal point i said any element that resonates with one viewer that's the focal point for that painting for that viewer yeah yeah you know what i mean because yeah. i don't i don't expect for them to agree with everything I have on the yeah. uh, on the painting or have an experience of that, whatever it is, there is one one element that really resonates with them. I said that's the focal point for that viewer. It might be a different element, a focal point for somebody else. So, yeah, yeah, Carolyn, when when that veteran was asking, telling you about your painting, did you just kind of cross your fingers in your back and say, yeah, that's that's what I meant by my painting? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, but you know, still, I I think when we make paintings, it no longer when when it goes out in the public, it's no longer it's not just ours anymore. No, it, it's it's whoever it's it's it, you know the public in some sense owns it and stuff because they can they can make our paintings richer by seeing things in our paintings that maybe we may not have originally meant, but if it enriches the the viewer, it enriches us. And stuff, right? So, okay. okay. I also, I also had another experience. Uh -huh. In the, my beginning, when I started painting, I was doing objects. I, I did a series of objects, 
which actually the reason I did it when I look at those objects, I only see my mom. Oh, because okay. those are all the things my, my mom used to use to make homemade vinegar and sell yeah. when, when I was a kid. So that means a lot to me. So when I had that picture in a show, one lady said, oh, I love this painting so much. Only if it didn't have that one object in there. <laughs> so I say <laughs> too, too bad because you don't know what it is because she didn't know what it is because she oh. didn't know what it is. I said, you know, yeah, it's too bad. Oh. That's that's the way it is. If you remove it, I buy. I said, no, I'm not. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, you know, according to my clock, we have eight minutes left. I've gotten through two questions, so I'm hoping. <laughs> <laughs> so, but no, but I, I don't mind because you guys are, are, have such interesting questions and have interesting answers. So don't don't worry if we don't get through all the questions. But let me ask this um, next question, and we'll after eight minutes we'll download this video and stuff, and then I'll I'll let you know when to get on the second link. But for for my next question, all of us, you know, we want our art to be seen by people and we want our art to touch people in some way. You guys all mentioned that. And, but since we all do different art, we'll all have different audiences for our art, right? Now for all of you, I guess this is a two part question. The first part is what has been your experience exhibiting in galleries, open studios, um, you know, churches, um, libraries, um, you know, um, and, and such, and what venues have been best for connecting your art to the right audience. No rush, you can, <laughs> you know, Somebody... but yeah, whoever wants to answer first. I, I make it quick. Uh, because of the subject matters of my paintings, I stay away from galleries. Galleries are in business of making money mm -hmm. and they want pretty stuff that people like to put on their walls. Yeah. And I know mine is not that, and I spend money with gallery to put it there, but I know I will receive no money back because uh, people who go to galleries are not looking for those things. Okay. So the, I only make it to spread my message, and that goes through the uh, nonprofit galleries or museums. Oh. Or art centers that's that's my venue yeah yeah and i have totally put aside making money from my art so that's that helps me yeah. <laughs> to concentrate for my mission yeah oh, okay so viviana carolyn what have been what have been your experiences and what have been the best venues for you two um so i think in answering that question i'm kind of thinking about who is my audience and um, I mean, even though my art often appeals to nature lovers, I've seen it connect to a lot of different audiences. Um, and I think I've seen that by exhibiting in different places. And so like for coffee shops, I noticed a lot of young professionals go there to work or to socialize. And so um, I've sold some paintings through coffee shops or just people commenting on them and enjoying them. Um, I think doing art fairs, you know, like with Pacific Fine Arts and art fairs in the summer, these outdoor art fairs, um, I see a lot of families come by and there's families with grandparents or um, little kids and parents, you know, all ages. And yeah. it's really cool to see their reactions. Like some little kid came into my tent one time and was like, oh, I'm just like scared <laughs> for a while. And I was like, oh, this is really, really cool. Like they... I don't know, it, it just sort of exposed them to something beautiful and something that gave them some awe, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I think I chatted with like a grandpa for a really long time one time and <laughs> stories and like memories that my art brought up and that was very fun. Um, I've also done, um, like Hadi was saying, like community art centers and nonprofit art galleries. Um, and I would like to try out, um, gallery representation. And so that's one of my goals right now. And, um, and then hopefully also maybe like a group museum exhibition or things like that. But, um, yeah, I've just really enjoyed seeing how different audiences respond in different places, you know, that I exhibit my art. Oh, cool. Cool. 
Yeah. Yeah. How about you, Viviana? How, well, how's been your experience? Do we have time or, or do you want oh, to? Yeah. If we don't, if we don't make it for this one, I'll give you time through the next one too. Okay. So, um, in terms of the art, well, I got to say, I think everybody could be an audience. Like when, when we, um, try to think, okay, who is going to be my audience? Actually, anybody can. Yeah. The, the response yeah. is what maybe might not be the best. Some people might not react to it. Some people will love it. So you want those that will love it, right? <laughs> That's what we call the audience. But I always say to my, my students, so I teach art, anybody can appreciate yeah. in your yeah. right? So said that, um, I would say for me, and lately I have been more successful online, like with showing in the now new medias of showing it. I've always have waited for also the galleries, the museums. The waiting list is always long. You have to get in there. I mean, there are a couple of contests that I've been, you know, involved this and that, but it's hard if you're not with representation, like Caroline mentioned, right? Like somebody that is helping you or that they, you know, are not sure about your art, like Hadi said, because it's so political, it might not sell, right? But online, like we have this amazing connection now. It's good and bad, right? Yeah. Both work, mm -hmm. But I am trying my best to make it work for me. So I've been putting a lot of effort in this new social um, world that we live in. Yeah. I have, I run my own gallery online. I have uh, connected with more people that I never, you know, heard before here and there in the world that come back and say something, hey, what about this? Or, and I have seen much more too, which I like. So the physical places I love is the first connection, but sometimes I feel they are so limited that for me right now, again, it's the social media, my best oh. uh, source of connection. Oh, okay. Well, you know, I have a question later on about that stuff. So I'm going to ask you about that. We will, we'll, we'll, you know, all of us will ask your advice. How do we survive <laughs> in online and stuff? But I know with me, I, I love being in galleries. And part of it is just because I do so many paintings. My condo is pretty small. And my wife keeps on bugging me to go into the show just so that we can get rid of the paintings so we can have space. Right. I don't know if that's a problem with you. I mean, part of it's just practical. It's just my wife is she gets tired of oh, I got to move this canvas of his because, you know, I got to I want to you know, I want to put like a, a bookshelf here and stuff. It's, 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 it's part of the, you know, I think part of it with me is just I, I you know, I want my wife to be happy and I want to stay married to her and stuff. So I, <laughs> I want to exhibit my stuff just so I have space in the condo and stuff. It's part of it. You guys do. A, do you guys have a lot of backlog and stuff or? Yeah, sometimes I don't frame them because I know. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Because I mean, there is no space. So I don't frame them until somebody wants it or I need to put it somewhere. Then I frame it and then it occupies more space. But. You you just see all my artists like <laughs> catalogs <laughs> like this that row. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I right. see your thing. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, for me it's the garage and stuff because we we have a garage and stuff. But what we do is we, I I in my walls I I hang all my paintings and stuff. It's just my wife only likes some of my paintings. She doesn't like <laughs> so so. <laughs> so I have to worry about that. Okay, we have. Left. What do you? What all of you? What do you love about art, and why is art important? Mm. I think, I mean, personally, it's really fun and interesting, I mean, to see it, you know, I mean, besides making it, of course, we all love making art, but um, here, but yeah, like to see it. And I, um, I went to the De Young Open um, oh, exhibit yeah, yeah. that you might have heard about. And oh, it's, it's coming up. Keep your eyes open. It's coming up very soon. Oh, you guys okay. make sure you get your submit work. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they, they put an open call for another one. They notified us that the open call is coming. Oh, oh. here okay. I think. Okay. Yeah, yeah you one... guys know it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You should too, Angelo. Oh yeah, yeah. But you know, I have my issue. But I, I don't want to interrupt Carolyn. Go ahead and say what you you, you wanted to say, and then I'll. I'll what 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 was in that exhibit at, at the current De Young exhibit right now that you that you saw? 
Yeah, so they did an um, open call, I guess, last year as well. Um, oh, okay. And it was really cool how they organized it and they tried to fit as many artists as they could. So it was salon style and like a big exhibit that you could walk through and um, just from, from floor to ceiling. And oh. they kind of organized it first with, I think, political sort of art and then um, some architectural and then some portraits and human figure. Um, and then it was nature and landscapes um, and then abstract art. And then as you keep going, um, it was surreal and shock art. Uh -huh. uh, and it was just so fun to see so much variety of art in all those categories. And um, yeah, very, very interesting. And I think um, also why is art important? Um, I feel like it gives us feedback for what is happening in our culture, I think, um, or just happening in the world and happening in people and the people around us. And um, recently I've seen a lot of um, museums or galleries seeking specific topics on indigenous um, people and also um, immigrate immigrants and like the immigration experience. And um, like in the Los Gatos Museum, uh, art museum, there's an exhibit uh, by Linda, Linda Simmel, and it's about her father's experience immigrating from Germany, I think after World War II. And it was just a really cool experience to see. And I've seen a lot of like Middle Eastern um, immigration experiences. And uh, yeah, so just really cool that it like art shows us what's what's going on and shows us other people's experiences. Oh, cool. yeah. uh, just emphasize what Caroline just said, really art is has this power of transmitting right emotions feelings thoughts to a deeper level really that what um the everyday shows so we artists i always say we in museums i feel the same like we make a pause on kind of a flow of things and then suddenly you just grab a moment and or a piece of it and just freeze it you know make yeah. you make people think about it for a second or whatever they give you right yeah. but I think that's that's the power of it. It's just something that um, I'm gonna just repeat this word because I think it's the key word is transmitting, whether yeah. from them them to you, is this connection that happens. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, mine mine is a uh, pretty much thought provoking. Yeah. So mm -hmm. and when I see people's reaction, it's really rewarding. Yeah. And okay. I haven't had any negative so far because we live in a liberal area yeah. so, uh, everybody ag agrees with my subject matters uh, but people's reaction sometimes not the way I want it they yeah. go too far my painting actually made somebody cry oh wow which I didn't intend to do to go that far but it resonated with her so much that something like that has happened to somebody in her family or somebody that she knows and it make her cry. It was about honor killing. Oh, okay. And yeah, and it, it was a really got to her. Yeah. It's that, I didn't want it to go that far, but that's how it happened. Yeah. 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 No, and I think you want to go that far. You want to touch those feelings that sometimes are hidden and uh, we put I, them aside. Right. So it's it's good that she cried. It's a yeah, way but, of, but yeah. I want I want the people I want the people who are not paying attention to those things. I want to attract those kind of people, not the people who happen to them. You know, I hope I don't know how to do that. <laughs> oh, that yeah. I think, again, as we mentioned, art is gonna be seen by everybody and everybody will have its own reaction. Yeah. And you yeah. would like people you know, your specific niche, but it's very hard to control that. But I would say if this person cry and felt something, yeah. that's the power of art. And it's not only visual. You know, when you read a, a, a good art, like yeah. a good book, when you see a, a dance that makes you feel something, like all art has this energy, right? Yeah. That yeah. connects you to something that maybe we haven't understood can yeah like we don't like can perceive it but definitely it's in the subconscious what i call <laughs> and it just connects and it makes a lot of sense whether it's sad whether it's very it's visceral happy, yeah. like there yeah. is this artist um kara walker i couldn't remember the name but uh african-american all her art since 
I seen it since many years ago, and I remember feeling so uncomfortable with it. It was so visceral. It was yeah. so, visceral. It, and she's you know a great representative of uh, African American culture in general, and it's it's painful. But I think it it needs to be seen too, even if it hurts. Yeah. You know, but. It's yeah. it's a way of healing in a way, releasing, understanding. So, yeah, I think that's, that's what they said. The art should comfort the comfort uncomfortable and uncomfort the comfortable. Yeah, comfortable. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> yeah. I love that's, it. Yeah. If you can remember the exact saying of that word of that saying, it's, it's a good <laughs> saying. Yeah. yeah, I always think that you know, like I think all three of you give examples of like how your art touches people in unexpected ways and stuff you know that um you know i was like one of the things i i thought of I, I don't think it's i don't know if it's a brilliant insight but i always think you know, like with me my, my political cartoons are my responsibility to the community my mm -hmm. fine arts is more my responsibilities to myself in the sense that um you know like um i think with you hadi it, mine, it's, is, it's reverse. A combination mine is reverse of <laughs> mine yeah. is reverse yeah. my fine art is my responsibility to the public uh, the other part is just for myself yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so but i think all of us there is a sort of like you know with carolyn you talked about how you you, you want to touch nature and stuff and the, and sort of the healing process and that's personal but you also touch upon climate change and indigenous cultures and that's sort of communal and stuff and i think it's the same thing with you viviana you want to talk about your your sort of more surrealistic imagery is personal but then you also want to talk about uh, uh, the environment too, which is communal, right? And stuff. So it's a combination of both and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But um, yeah. But um, yeah. It, it's it's a cool thing. Yeah. You know. Um, can, can you hold for a second? Somebody's knocking on my door. <laughs> let, me, <laughs> let me let me check. Out. I'm gonna pause this for a second and stuff. Hold on. Okay. One time I did a meeting and I for for forgot to press record. And so I had to do it all over again three weeks later and stuff. So I press record. Don't worry. <laughs> so well, I, I forgot where were we? Where were we in the conversation and stuff? I forgot. I guess we were responding to Hadi's answer um, about someone crying, you know, when seeing his art. And um, I just wanted to also comment on that. That that's really cool because I think sometimes you know you're grieving something that um, you don't even know is there yet for a while and. Um, and then you might encounter like some music or some art that kind of, um, ex it out. Ex yeah. yeah, expresses what you didn't know was there, what you couldn't express or puts words to something. And it really similar to what Viviana was saying, like, it, it just seems really cool that your art had that, and, you know, it's powerful and you executed it in a way that it could like connect with someone so strongly and sort of bring that out. And whether it's like, uh, you know, sad emotion or positive emotion like I think it's beneficial either way yeah and just really yeah, cool. yeah. Nice. I, I think art has that ability to um it's healing both in the personal sense and in the communal sense mm -hmm. and stuff you know it, it heals both the community and the person and stuff and that's I think you know I think that's cool and stuff my, my art doesn't do that my I think my 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 fine art I'm actually trying to make people laugh and smile and stuff so if if people cry for my art, it's usually because the art is bad. Sorry. <laughs> so. But I think you, you also do unconscious, well, not unconsciously, because of course you are doing um, it so regularly. Is So it's a laugh, of course, because there is cartoon, right? That's kind of your yeah, But the message is not laughable. Yeah. <laughs> How to yeah. make awareness really like yeah. make people think to re re evaluate you know what the world is putting outside like really oh. what is happening so i think you're you nail it every time every time and uh i think cartoons are you know political cartoons are meant to do that really oh yeah yeah you, oh, but you i'm just saying that but it's yeah, you know yeah. just yeah. uh a moment with all the <laughs> message yeah. behind it right that is supporting yeah. Yeah, uh, something you know my, and, and sometimes even sad and depressing, but yeah, yeah. But you, know, you know, my fine arts, I try to be non-political. It's only my my cartoons that I be political and stuff because um, I think I'm different than Hadi in a way, in the sense that I don't try to be political all the time. But when I am political and stuff, I think Viviana, you're right. I am trying to encapsulate stuff, 
But, you know, I like the Three Stooges, you know, I like the Marx Brothers and stuff. I, I like that kind of goofy humor and stuff. So I try to, so um, I always think that my stuff, I, I, I think I'm a decent painter, but technically I think you guys have more depth and stuff. Nobody, you know, like in my, my, at least my fine art paintings and stuff, like my painting of the chicken, um, you know, um, it's not going to um, evoke healing. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know. evokes, evokes no. the talks evokes the talks it's a message yeah yeah and stuff so <laughs> unless you're a chicken i guess but <laughs> you know but okay 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 next question and stuff oh did, did, you, did you guys finish and stuff in terms because you guys gave some good answers and stuff um yeah, I was just going to say, and it's not only us doing it, but also, well, the reflection of it. I mean, but when you do it, you find things about yourself, too, yeah. in that, you know, um, evolve. That's why people, as Hadi say, I have to keep on going because the more you do, the more you kind of find things, put pieces together of what what are you looking for, what's bothering you, what do what you want to create, and as I mentioned, I, I teach art. I've seen in my students, the younger ones are so transparent. Like yeah. when they are creating art, it's amazing. I, have, I just want to share this because it was very deep um, situation. One of my students that was only drawing very negative things like monsters and mo like uh, nightmares, etc. And then eventually through art, we were able to find out that he was, he had linked himself with this society of horror. At a very early age, he was only eight, uh, and um, I was able to kind of found, you know, we found this through art, like to follow the pattern. And it's like this is happening, and he's following it. And then they found out that, you know, in his playtime with his iPad, he was going and somehow registering. It was only for adults, but it was this society is meant to release for some people that like horror, but not for an eight-year-old. And uh, it was so consistent, you know, it was something else. And I, I mentioned, I was the first, like, this is something going on visually on him. He has a visual trauma, what I call. And um, we, we found it. But it is, this is just one of many examples I've seen, whether positive, negative, their fears, where they are in life. It's impressive how much yeah. art projects for me. Like, I, 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 uh, I've seen it and I kind of read it easily now, but it's something that... <laughs> Yeah. that everybody should do that's why i don't think like it's a privilege to do it of course it is but it should be mandatory honestly for everybody to yeah. create <laughs> yeah for all three yeah that's an inspirational story and stuff and um for all three of you art is healing right mm. or am i wrong? oh yes yes oh, okay yeah. okay it, it's always has this part of it for sure you know it's a release of energy yeah. when you are yeah. creating whatever it is whether it's you want to sustain something you want to get inspired by something say something it's it's a release of energy you are transmitting yourself project to yeah. others all, yeah. i think all artists are humans I, we all have our own problem in life that yeah. bothers us but most most they put their own personal life in the painting. Yeah. For me, I have problems in my life too. I'm no different. And some of some of it is really uh, not good. But I look at those who have it worse than me. Yeah. And I put their stories up on my canvas. Yeah. And try to avoid my personal life on the canvas i look at those who have it worse than me and yeah. that's how <laughs> that's how i continue <laughs> oh okay yeah. okay oh that's cool that's cool i mean it's not cool that you have problems but i mean it's cool <laughs> that, that you use your... we all have problems <laughs> everybody has problems <laughs> no but it's cool that you use art in a in a constructive way to yeah. deal with yeah. that and stuff you know i think for both you and uh, viviana told wonderful stories about how that that can be that something negative can become positive and through art and stuff mm -hmm. healing yeah it's, yeah it's healing and stuff and i guess carol and through nature it's the same thing with you it's a healing thing and stuff yeah and i um i've also made um these landscape paintings on wood panels and then done like a glass like a sh I shattered glass and did a glass mosaic over the landscape painting and 
that was kind of a very healing thing for me um just with like um a lot of personal loss in the last year and I was sort of expressing that like I I saw some beautiful things come out of the loss and just sort of expressing like even though something can be completely shattered there can be kind of this beauty shining beneath it and and it was healing for me and I hope it's healing you know when I exhibit it if I exhibit it someday hopefully it's healing for people too yeah so in a way art is never a monologue it's always a dialogue between you and whoever's seeing your art. Mm -hmm. Unless you want to just keep it in your house on your own wall. Well, <laughs> that, yeah, my wife will let me. Yeah, she, if you want to bring it, <laughs> present it to outside, that's that's yeah, that's a different story, yeah. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Well, my, my okay, my, my next question, and it, it has something to do with what Viviana was talking about and stuff, is that, you know, all of us as artists, we're always, people are always bugging us get a website, get a Facebook page, get an Instagram, you know, and all that stuff. You know, Viviana seems to be successful in this, but how have you guys been online? What have been the best ways to market and promote your art? And what advice would you give to another artist that um, that is, um, you know, that wants to promote the work? And since Viviana touched upon it, maybe you can start and stuff, because I'm actually kind of curious about that. How, how, how do you, you know, what's it like online and stuff? And um, what advice would you give to the three of us and stuff? Uh, about <laughs> well, to start, I, um, <laughs> so it, this has been recently for me learning through my life, right? Of how the world of art moves. We are still in a stage that visual uh, art, like the one we do, Mm -hmm. is not protected as it should. Like now, for example, songs, right? You play a song and the artist is earning 10 cents, 30 cents, depending what it is, but they are still earning. People see your art, get moved by it, like it, but the artist doesn't have a saying. Some other uh, organizations do, you know, get advantage of that. And those are the ones that are kind of, getting the best out of this world. However, yeah. I mentioned um, art is something that is needed, needs to be there. We want to communicate it. And I think that's why, as you mentioned, Angelo, they are bugging you. Do your Facebook, do it, because it needs to be seen in a way, right? Now, how we are going to protect ourselves, that's a conversation that is happening, actually, with many organizations that I've heard. And it's, you know, difficult to understand how we're going to, make sure that everybody that is creating something and somebody else likes it and gets a reaction out of it like you know literature so how are how are they going to help the artist itself so that's the hardest part and um it's hard to visualize exactly the laws the measurements but i would say for now just to be present so people can see your art at least do what art is supposed to be which we have been saying it here over and over, which is transmitting, which is uh, making awareness, everything. It's the reason why, um, you know, uh, they are pushing you to create your world also in social media, because it's, it's the fastest way of reaching many people from different backgrounds, different countries, et cetera. Yeah. So that is successful. Yes, I know, I, I, I've been following many artists that are, way more successful in selling and everything but you actually need to have a niche um an audience that likes your work it's not that again the audience could be anybody as i like to say it's there but those who like it you need to kind of understand where they are who are they best thing also is to create connections with them right mm -hmm. because that's going to help you like they get they understand where you're coming from they connect with you and then it's easier for them to um, support in many ways or want it to be part of that vision, right? Yeah. So it takes time for sure. And it's not easy. Sometimes some artists that, again, that I've been following and they're more successful having great moments and then it goes down. So it's not consistent. That's the only um, uh, issue that I see. It's all, unless you are super, super uh, good and you have a lot of people pushing you, uh, that could actually help for you to be 
selling and moving your art more often. But in general, just to be seen for now, I think is a first step that everybody should try because yeah. your art needs to be seen. Whether they like it, no, it's good, no, that's something else. But moving it, I think, is is important as an artist. Almost, you know, like if you want to have do this like seriously, you you do need to start connecting. And the second is and something that is hard for, for the artist, but it's been marketing your art. This is what nobody teaches you ever to do no. in art school. I'm telling you, because I got a master's. And yeah. it's every all is about thoughts, you know, philosophy, techniques, other artists, but it's hard the teacher that tells you, you know what, you also need to earn and this is what you need and marketing is important. That one I learned kind of by myself later in life. Yeah. And, you know, it's also needed. So um, kind of getting some, I would say, business yeah. basic. It's going to make it easier for you to dedicate 100% to create art. Otherwise, you're going to have to always have a main job or the second you know, thing that gives you an income and then come back to create in your zone and not be disturbed, like Hattie said, in what am I going to do to earn money with this? But just have your peace with it and, you know, do a career that maybe um, has a more, uh, a better way to give you an income, right? So yeah. it's it's always a <laughs> situation. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the big thing, I, I, I worked in a library and then but the lie gave the library it's not one of those jobs where you come home and you take your work with you you know once i once i fixed my last book i can go home and do my art and stuff right so but um yeah so for you what's most successful is it instagram is it, is it the website the best are you on um what's that one um you know what do you like the best or you know well, tiktok and um, um, oh tiktok, TikTok. I don't know. Oh, I the don't know. is always word to word. Somebody that you know that they like your work, and then you kind of send them to your site where where you oh, can get. It. Okay. But always, I think the personal touch, you know, and in in terms of social um, sites, is the one you use the most that is going to be more successful. That's something I've learned in this all this new marketing, um, you know, just process that I'm doing. If you do Facebook a lot, then market to Facebook. If you do Instagram, then go for it. If you know how to TikTok and it's working, try it. Now, yeah. most of the people that will reach an income that can't support um, art, right? Because so TikTok is, for example, a younger audience, yeah. which doesn't really invest too much in things like art yet because they are they don't still- have the money. <laughs> yeah, they don't have the money. They might go, normally it's, you know, things that are that touch you that go first, like shoes, clothes, jewelry, mm -hmm. all those myself faster. Art touches you, but in different ways, right? It's, a, it's an almost unconscious. Way. So you have to be a little bit more mature to fully appreciate the value of it. So for that, I would say Facebook, Instagram. But, you know, some people are doing great in Twitter or X, now the name. Um, it, it depends, you know, like where, where are you? Where is your niche or, or which one do you like? I would say my, for myself has been Instagram. The okay. one that um, I I have found recently that is kind of working and Facebook, but uh, Facebook is a combo because it's a private um, account. So it's with the people within my private space and Instagram, I leave it public and that could be from everywhere. Okay. Yeah. How about, how about you two? Uh, what What's it been like? Has it been like um, good, bad, or I don't know what I'm doing? I mean, what, I mean that's that's sort of how I feel. Is I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm I'm just doing it anyway and stuff. That's yeah. me. I'm just doing it anyway. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> because uh, I've had a website for eight years. I have Facebook for eight years. The only email i receive from them is huh? let me make your art sell oh, yeah. they, they just want <laughs> not a single person say they like my i want to buy your art eight years i haven't received one from website or facebook um, then i went then i went to instagram for five years now uh they uh, 
Is that same better? Same thing, same thing. You can create those digital uh, venues, but as uh, Vivian said, you have to market it. And I'm not in a position to spend my fixed social security on something that I don't know if it's going to pay off or not. Uh -huh. I need every penny of the money I'm getting right now because <laughs> I yeah, don't yeah. sell also. Uh, so for younger people, uh, it's possible. For me, it's not. Uh, okay. To, to, because it, it still costs money. on Online, it still costs money until the time that your name is everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. Then it will take off on its own. But yeah. until then, you have to spend money just like... Well, the only time I have sold... I sold to people who have seen my work physically yeah. in a in a show or some or something, but nothing from online. Mm -hmm. But I still do the online exposure, just the limited distance that it's going without marketing. That's it. Yeah. Okay. How about you, Carolyn? Has it been a, a vast waste of that, or has it been fruitful for you? Like, or have you still tried to figure? Are you still figuring it out? I think um, the strongest thing that I've found in terms of marketing and promotion is personal connections first. Okay. So making those personal connections um, when I'm meeting people at a gallery or a show or through art fairs or coffee shops where people can see my art in person. And then my website and Instagram um, are places where people can stay connected, people I've already met. And then we stay connected or I can, if they're interested and they meet me in person and we're, you know, we sort of become friends and they want, they care about me and they want to invest in me. And so then they'll be like, oh, can you direct me to your Instagram or your website? And then I'll direct them. And then um, that's, that's also kind of helps them to just keep in touch. I think art, you know, it's really important and people love it, but it's not something, it's not a business where people wake up and they're like in the morning and they're like, I want to spend a thousand dollars on a large original because I need that <laughs> now. Like, you know, it's not like a shower door where you need it because if you don't, like, you know, your bathroom is going to be flooded by your shower. Um, and so I think email lists have been um, really great in staying connected with people and sort of reminding you that, ex that you exist, you know, I mean, of course they they remember you and, um, but it's, um, yeah. And so like the email lists that I've made through art fairs, um, have been a good way of connecting, staying connected with people. And I think besides patrons and clients, um, you know, a lot of, it, um, like gallery owners and gallery assistants and just people working in the arts, um, I found them to use Instagram a lot over Facebook, um, and so it's a tool, I think, just with networking as well. Mm -hmm. um, and networking, you know, you wouldn't think that that is a direct um, correlation with marketing, but like other artists have a lot of resources and they have their own client base. And I think sometimes their client wants something that they can't give. And so they'll refer um, their clients to, you know, their friends or someone who can. Um, and so just like having that connection um, through networking is has been really good yeah. yeah yeah and i think networking is actually key for uh, i've seen other artists that their art for me is not that great but they have a very strong network and if and they sell like nobody's business because that <laughs> network keeps them going it's impressive so networking is i would i would say something that i wish i would have known back then and i would have been kind of collecting all this people that I met through, because sometimes it's like, yeah, you connect, perfect, you know, and you continue your your path. But I mean, it retained every aspect of it. It's it's something that I would advise to do. Like, and I, I tell my own children, it's like, you never know when they're gonna come back. So always you know, make sure you uh, <laughs> yeah. keep that connection, basically. Yeah. It's also, um, I'm sorry. Um, I think also having an elevator speech ready, um, something at the top of your head, you can explain in one or two sentences what you do and why you do it, you know, as soon as someone, because we're always being asked, what do you do? What's your career? What's your profession? And so having something ready, then you always have this opportunity to like, just let people know. And you never know who might really be looking for art and wanting it. And um, yeah. yeah so sometimes they ask, what, what do you do? I say, I'm an artist. And say, no, what do you do for a living? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, again, because it's not, 
if you say, oh, I make music, you know, like music again has it, or I write books, but as a visual artist, this is still not established 100%. Yeah. Our, I would say, uh, protection, right? Like our, like everything we do, it just stays there without resonating in in um in payment. I would say so. It's it's very interesting how it works, but we'll oh, okay. see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, you won't believe this. We have six minutes left in our oh, meeting already? and stuff. <laughs> But, you know, um, if, if uh, let me just ask one last question. It'll, it'll be a quick one and stuff. But um, for the more experienced artists and stuff, um, yeah, what advice would you give to the newer members of the group, uh, newer artists? And for the newer artists and stuff, what would you say to the more experienced artists? But um, when I say experience, they're still in the prime of life. So, you know, you know, so, but um, what advice would you give to, I mean, you've already given each other really good advice, but what advice in general would you give? For me, I say, continue doing your art. Keep a day job too. Keep a day job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You have to have a day job. Yeah. Um, I want to follow up with what Hadi said. I think the word perseverance fits so well in the arts and that's another word that i wish i would have retained way early of course i have been fortunate <laughs> continuing but just to sustain believing yourself right like yeah. relentless of what you do just keep on going doesn't matter if people are saying what are you going to do money wise this of course you know you have to find ways of surviving and living in that society so yeah for sure but don't think that it's worthless. It's yeah. actually quite worthy, but the worth is not seen right away. That's the problem that um, the society has. Like it doesn't, we don't have it always right in what should be first, but regardless, relentless perseverance. <laughs> oh. Society has respect for art, no matter what you do, but respect for the artist is not there. Yeah, <laughs> I could agree with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Carol, do you have any, any last words you want to say? What advice would you give to Hadi and Vivian, I guess? Um, I would agree with the keep on creating and keep on making art. I think I would say keep on seeing art and seeing other people's art as well. Um, I think there are also a lot of resources for artists Um uh, like right now I'm applying to some grants in the arts and it's not just about the funding, but it's also about um, the cohort of other artists who you're with who get accepted to the grant and or fellowships and residencies. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. If, if you if you look at uh, my Facebook profile, uh, I attend every art event, not every art event, as many art events as I can. Yeah. And I take a lot of picture and put it on my uh, profile page on Facebook for people to know this show is going on, what kind of art is there, go and see it. So I, I was just yesterday in uh, Whitney Modern in Las Gatos, a really wonderful show. And I took pictures and I put it up. I usually go around. And also, uh, I'm a part of two art leagues, one in San Jose and one in Cupertino. And I am in charge of, for the San Jose, I'm in charge of inviting artists for demo. Mm -hmm. So when the demo is done, I take a lot of pictures and I put it uh, on my Facebook to people see the process of the artist, what they do, what how they work their, to get the, what they output. So yeah, I'm, I'm not only encouraging myself, I try to encourage other people to stay mm -hmm. with the art. And on my <laughs> on my Facebook page, I only have my own final finished works. Yeah. So I have two pages. So yeah. And Viviana, you're in the Sunnyvale, you're you're the president of the Sunnyvale Art Club right now. No, right? no, no, we don't have a president. I was one of the board members that stepped forward to help while we <laughs> oh, 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 okay, okay. I got that wrong. But it, it's about to disintegrate Angelo. Because oh. nobody is uh organizing themselves well 
And I did try, you know, to help as much and we are still, but I think it's just going to be a social club more than a nonprofit art organization. So it's going to switch this year, which might be better because he was having trouble finding people to communicate.